It's one of the ones where I don't think I've improved on the photograph at all, but I did enjoy doing it. But I, I was really wanting to work at the really super strong contrast here and then the, the kind of more gradual gradations of grey, but you had this darker area here and, and um, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's really just exploring things. And one of the advantages of drawing very similar themes and objects over and over again is you do get to improve. Mm. And, and I, I really think that, that nothing, nothing substitutes for practice. I get so many direct message questions asking how I do this and that, and, and I try and answer them all. But I say over and over again, you need to practice. You need to practice. There is no mm. shortcut. There is no magic way. There is no tip that's going to make your drawings suddenly 20 times better. You have to do the work. Um, but having said that, I can see the difference that practice has made. And I now, um, when I first started doing these two years ago, I never put people in because I didn't like drawing people. And I never put cars in because I didn't like drawing cars. And <laughs> you know, you can imagine what they look like. <laughs> like the zombies had come and killed us all, you know. Um, and now I really enjoy doing the people. I don't really enjoy the cars yet, um, but I love putting the people in. And it's only that I persevered and practice. So that's the other thing I'd say to people. You can't just, just keep trying, keep doing it. Yeah, uh, you know, I believe in it uh, too, that there's no shortcut way or the magic yeah. stick that you'll be <laughs> you are getting changed to a sketcher. And you, um, everybody, uh, if you want to improve the uh, sketch quality, uh, it will be happened after a while. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the inter this, this kind of interview uh, will help to our audiences to improve their sketch um, um, tasks. And so they're always thinking about the, uh, the problems of starting points. They always, yes. uh, they always uh, falling in this uh, trap that I can't, I can't do this, so I uh, ignore it. I uh, throw yes. it away, and this is a big problem. So, uh, first of uh, things that I must to um, say you, I want to uh, spread out this culture that uh, the the problem, the errors, uh, the the anything is not good for you that happened in your sketch is one of uh, the part of the sketch. And, yes. if, and you know, all of the sketches that we uh, draw and every day and we present, we post it, uh, there is no problem in the, uh, the, the far away. You know, when you are looking forward and looking closely to the sketch, you've yes. got some errors. There's no problem with that. But they always uh, pretended that there's no problem about your sketch. You're wonderful, you're amazing. And uh, I think it's a psychological uh, crisis about the urban sketch uh, training. So how do you uh, speak um, about the psychological uh, matters, about this phenomenon? I think the sketch is like a phenomenon. And this is a difference between the design things. How you can explain to your um, students, for example, the problems and how you handle this? Before I do that, can I just, just say, look, with this one, I didn't get it right. This, yeah. this section here, it looks like it's lifted up. Yeah. Because I, I, that line should have been flatter. That curve should have been flatter. Yeah. And, and, and look, what was I going to do? I was going to say, well, I learned something. So please don't, don't think that I don't. I'm still learning. I, I make mistakes. Um, I post it anyway because, you know, I thought the rest of it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah, look, the hardest thing, the very hardest thing to do with every drawing is to start. And every single day, I still walk around the house sometimes for two, three hours doing other things when I know I should be starting my drawing because I'm scared that I'll wreck it and it won't work out, that it'll, I'll have a problem somehow with it. And then when I've done the pencil drawing and that's done, mm. um, and that's when I set up the, the camera and time and stuff, um, time lapse, um, that's also a time where I find it really hard to sit down and start because I'm thinking, will it work out? Will it not work out? Can I do it? I've got this picture in my head for the maybe two hours while I did the pencil outline because the pencil outline usually takes longer than mm. all of the ink work. Mm. All the while I've been doing the pencil outline, I've been thinking 
more about how I want to actually work the image with colour and with tone and line and depth and all those things. And so then so, suddenly all the pressure is there when I start with the ink. And, yeah, I often get up and go and do some jobs in the garden at that point because I'm scared of wrecking my pencil outline. So yeah. I think the real, the real battle is in the head. Mm. Um, look, you just have to start. You just have to do it. Um, we learn by our mistakes and that's okay. Um, and um, uh, often the things that, 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 that really worry us, no one else sees. Um, I've become very good in my style, of my technique of when a line isn't quite in the right place, I mm. often bundle lines together and one of them's in the right place. Or if mm. you join two of them up, they end up being in the right place. And you, the eye, our eyes are really good at seeing what they expect to see. So mm. if I've got a few wobbly lines, if they're not too wobbly, the mm. eye, if the rest, if the things around it are okay, the eye will just the brain will just put that line in the right place, even though it's not, and, and it won't stand out too much. So there's a bit of forgiveness there, just the way our, 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 our head works. Um, yeah, it's an important point that you say about that. But, uh, you know, for example, uh, the previous um, interview with Albert, Albert said, yeah. uh, I never use the underdrum. Um, this is yes. great. And some and other famous sketchers like you, is uh, doesn't use the underdrum but i think this is yeah. so uh, uh, you know hard to understanding how they you know i'm changing it in in my mind as a pointing technique for example i can show you this yeah uh, wait a minute i can show you this one ah if you look at this i yes. use the first phase i use the point I change this uh, ideal to point like this, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm pointing and I'm uh, predicting the, uh, the extending of the line into the point, but I'm yes. using the ink. The ink yes. is so yes. dangerous. There is no yes. uh, the way to yes. back and you can't yes. step back for uh, yep. After yep. that pointing, I um, handle the foreground and the ground yes. and after background, the shapes, the forms, everything else. And it's so hard to the newcomers to um, uh, understand the way. But uh, I, I think the safe way is the underdrawing. But yes. did you uh, use the, uh, the pointing things? Or did you, uh, don't you uh, the, um, underdraw yet? If you have it. Yeah, no, look, I've got, I've, got, I've got a few things here. Um, um, last year, my my wife was in hospital for a couple of days, and and I took some I took some things to the hospital that I could just draw while I was just sitting next to her bed, and so I just took some photos and the sketchbooks and and so I was doing sort of simpler drawings. So these are these are direct ink, these are just mm -hmm. pen on the paper. Oh. But the way I did them was much the way I I did um, the the um, Sydney Town Hall, where I, I, I start with a section and then I reference and I kind of, I mean, go outwards. I mean, with, with these, then the tone is, is not done until until the rest of it's in place. This was one that I, I quite like. This is a railway station in Berlin. Um, so again, I, I start with a bit. There's a few bits here not quite right, but you don't notice it um, because there's enough things that are right. And um, so that was kind of good for me to kind of like be able to live with a line that wasn't in the right place. <laughs> um, yeah. and, I, and I don't think it's so, so I, I, I don't, I don't do a great deal of this because I, I enjoy doing the, the, the larger, more kind of considered mm. things. But, um, but when I do do them, yeah, I find I don't, I don't do as many dots as you. I may just, if I'm having trouble visualizing, I may get the pen and just put, I dot it where I think the corner's going to be, and then I'll just look across and look down and line that up and think, is that in the right place? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, with buildings, you get a lot of horizontals and verticals, so I, I tend to draw those um, or, or windows or doors or something and, and then reference the scale from that starting point. And so, that, that... Uh, so I got that. Uh, did you uh, yeah, did you using the pencil at the first part of your sketching or uh, after? Uh, not not with uh, these. 
these no, these no. ones didn't okay. have any. Yeah. In your style, you fix this this step in your style. You you are sketching in this step at you and the first point you are sketching by the pencil now. Yeah. So uh, yeah. did you uh, getting angry about your, for example, ink work for for first? Oh, time? I see. You mean yes, my um. You missed my, some paper. My original drawings were pencil. Um, why did I change to ink? Um. I think, I mean, I had a lot of people ask me questions, say, you know, why don't you work in ink? Um, I probably drew in pencil for about a year, for about 12 months. And I think I just not, didn't get bored with it because um, I think, you know, my, probably my best pencil drawings were done t towards the end. So I was happy with what was happening, but I, I just thought it was, it was time to kind of explore something else and, and new possibilities and um, um, with pencil you do have to worry about smudging all the time <laughs> and so I thought it would be really lovely not to have to worry about smudging the ink um, and so yeah I just I just began to play around and then there was a couple of months where I did some pen some pencil back to ink back to pencil um, and then eventually I got my confidence with the, the pen and then I had a few months of just doing straight pen line work. So yeah. doing cross hatching for shading and then I, the tone was a new thing and that was something to play around with. Um, and I actually think it's, um, I'm actually thinking that maybe in the next week or two, I'm gonna push into watercolor more simply because I, I've, I've kind of explored the tone so much. Mm. Part of me is wanting to try something, something different. And although I have lots of experience with oil paint, mm. Watercolor is so yeah. different, <laughs> so very different. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, uh, for a last question from myself to you, we have the fifty minutes to the, the yeah. people questions, and uh, the last one: Did you uh, draw something from the subjective, you know, uh, matter? That if you design something from your imagination, it, it is happened for you. Um, not the objective one. You envisage <laughs> something. No, not, I'm just did trying you, to think. Not, not, not in my adult life. Um, when I was a boy, I used to um, make up draw battleships, oh. <laughs> and, uh, and I would, I would, you don't this in these days. You, everything is no, no, I don't. And even with my oil okay. paintings, I'm painting things that I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. Uh, we are uh, getting engaged with the questions uh, from. Yes. I must uh, send my greeting to the Spanish friends, Indian friends, and the United States, and also Iran and Turkey. Also, we are in it. Uh, and, and countries, Indonesia, Syria, uh, and what else? The first question of our audiences. Mm. Oh, uh, the first question is uh, the most important one. The difference between the, the bit difference between the lines in sketch and drawing. I think the uh, you uh, you talked about, but if you briefly talk about this, the difference between the, the sketch line and drawing line. Tell us. Well, about the way that. the way I think of a sketching line is it's a far more gestural line. It's it's um, it may not be so precise, but um, I think of sketches as perhaps the, capturing more the feeling of a subject than the precise nature of the subject. And, oh. and so it's a faster, quicker, looser. I mean, it still has to be accurate to a point, but um, uh, there may be excess lines that, that just mm. kind of work around it. And, and there's a lot more selection of the detail that you choose to put in or leave out than perhaps in a drawing where you include more things. So uh, I think all of audience must be uh, mentioned this, uh, that we have a different lines, the broken lines, the torn lines, the direct lines. Uh, the, the art is how do you, how uh, you control and the control the behavior of the lines and this is your uh, talent about this. So the, another question is from Hi, French. Hi, friends. Sorry. The next question is related to the, your tools. Uh, 
yes. about your tools. Uh, which markers, which mark of your pencils or ink things? Um, I use... About the nymphs. Tell us about the... Also tell us about the nymphs. The, the, the nymphs, yes, which, yes, yes. Um, I tell in, you. Most, in most of my drawings, um, I... When I first have a subject, I usually look at it and work out, okay, what, is, what in this will I regard as foreground, as middle ground, and as far background? Oh. And so I create two, but usually three layers going back in the scene. And I will tend to use then, um, I will tend to use uh, a 0.3 millimeter pen. So in, in today's drawing, um, this, the steeple of, of St. Trinité and, and the bit in front, that, that's a point three. And then up on the hill, Sacre Coeur being the furthest away is a point one. Yeah. And the, the in between is a point two. Oh, point two. And so, and so the, you can sort of see the, 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 the contrast here. So the closer object has a stronger, darker line that's hmm. thicker and it's darker and further away. And that helps to create the effect of distance, the fact that it's darker and it's, it's, it's um, heavier and it's more emphasized because visually that's how things look to us when, when we're looking. So yeah, very occasionally I use a 0 0.05, um, but usually I, I use those three, but I would probably use, use all three of them. And I mean, it's not just, I mean, I, I would still use all three in, in a scene like this. So I've got 0.3 around here. Maybe I think I've got 0.3, these, these bits to there. This middle section here is 0.2, and this section up here is, is 0.1. And so, again, the fact that the lines get lighter and finer um, as they go back in, the, in the, the plane of the subject, in my mind, helps, it, helps give depth and help, gives a sense... Um, or that that can happen. You can also do that going up, as no. well as going back. So it 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 just depends on um, where you want to draw the eye and and what you yeah yeah or what but you want to be closer and further away. So I use I use the thickness of line. Uh, you you said uh, each part has a. Special widths and special needs, the foreground, the ground and background, yeah. and also the background. It's a standard way, uh, but uh, I mentioned again to our audience, don't put your question in a comment line because I rotate the screen and I can't <laughs> grab you <laughs> and the question from the icon. So uh, the, I must read from these questions again from the painting behind you. Someone's asking me why I don't use colour in my sketches. Um, so I can, I can say, well, because I haven't got there yet. I mean, in my mind, I still am learning this medium. Um, I've, I've had a year doing pencil. I had a year doing ink. And um, uh, using one tone, I think it's, it's, it's a good way. I mean, it's, it's a valid art form in its own right, um, monochromatic um, drawing. Um, but it's the less the less things that you have to think about, the more you can you can um, improve and come to understand what you're using. And I think one of the problems I see when people, I get a lot of people sending me their drawings asking me to critique them. And I think one of the problems that I see is that people are drawing subjects that are possibly too complex for their understanding of how all the parts go together. And I, I think it is. It is easier, and it's certainly what I've done, is to, to keep it simpler. And then once you come to understand those elements, you can introduce more. And I, I think colour is the next element I will introduce. Oh. So the next question from my icon. Uh, what is your uh, favourite uh, paper size? I mean, what's your favourite paper size? And also, you use the texture paper. And the paper Not is... really. My favorite, my favorite size is A3. A3. Yeah. The actual, the actual image size A3. is A2. B5. A4. A4. Sorry, A4. My wife, fortunately, A4 is this A3. Just... You, uh, you so, using the, yeah, no, using the frame about A3 and A4. Yeah. So, so there's there's my, one of my A4. I started with A4, 
And then as I began to do sort of more complex subjects, it just wasn't mm. big enough. So I switched to the larger size and now, now yeah. I do them all. You, on, you know, on, on, on. you're automatically uh, using the passepartout, the French word, the passepartout, the, the framing. And yes. Good, good aesthetic uh, trick about you. And you also, lim uh, you know, limit the, uh, put your sketch in the limitation. And uh, this is helped to you to control the, the wideness of your sketch. So for the next question, how can I start the, uh, how can I start the, uh, sketch from zero degree, you know, we have a, um, we have a, about nine minutes to the finish this interview. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Can you, can you put, uh, say about your recommendation to our audiences? Um, okay. I mean, fir firstly, don't expect to, to start where you will finish. So be prepared to, to not be too critical about yourself at the start, but equally, you have to have some level of self-criticism, helpful self-criticism. Mm. Well, every time I finish a drawing, I look at it and I say, what hasn't worked? Now, sometimes there, there might be just one or two little things that I think I didn't do what I wanted to do. And sometimes it might be a larger element. But there's always something that I can look at and think, how, if I was going to draw this drawing again from the start now, what would I try harder at or what would I change? Um, so... Yeah. Continually evaluate what you do. But the other important thing, as I said before, I think, was start simply. Think of it as like playing the piano. You start with simple pieces yeah. and you play those simple pieces until you get them right. And then more complicated elements of music are brought in and you play those till you get them right. And, you, and, um, um, and I think that's in a general term. I mean, it's always good to try something really hard. But if you always try something really hard, um, it, you might, may just get discouraged or you may never actually learn to master some, some of the fundamental elements. The other thing I would avoid doing is I, will, I would avoid copying other people's drawings too much because when you do that, um, you're not having to solve all the problems that you have to solve in representing three dimensions as two dimensions and in how you represent the detail in a simplified form. And those are the things that create your style. So if you copy someone else's drawing, you're copying mm. their solutions and you'll never develop your own style. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a critical point that you said about the, the, the using uh, the mini skills and using the, the tiny sketches at the first point. And after that, yeah. they can improve the quality of these sketches and can uh, select a bigger one. I saw one of our friends um, asked to you, uh, can I copy your, one of your works? Yeah, you can copy, but don't, don't, uh, you know. So yeah, you try yeah. Of course you it's can. Right. And, it, and it can be, but, it can be helpful, uh, you know, as, as a little every now and then thing, but, but, uh, um, or what I would say would be to really study my drawings, work out what do I really like about what Stephen does? What really, in, what do I engage with that I would like to have in my drawings? And mm. then put my drawing away, or you can put it next to it and draw something similar. So don't copy my drawing of a Paris rooftop scene, but look at my drawing, but get a different reference photo yeah. and then draw it so that you're still having to, to sort of engage creatively. And as you, even if you take what I've drawn in my style, because you have to completely re-represent it, you're actually going to be creating your own style through it rather than just copying mine. So I would, I would say Yeah, that. I believe in it. I believe in it. Um, everyone can find uh, his specialist time in uh, yes. his but, you know, individual style, we have the individual style. You can select the line uh, type types. You can select uh, your ink color paper. And this is so individual for anyone. So uh, yeah. uh, this first uh, important thing that you got your style at first and you, got, you find your patterns. Uh, if uh, Stephen is my pattern, is my uh, you know iconic character in his sketching, I must uh, change tiny things in your works to uh, finding out our character in our uh, self styles. So for the next question, we have five minutes only. 
for okay. next questions. The question is about uh, your painting uh, and also you using the color pencil, pencil color. Did you use the pencil color too? No, no, I haven't used any pencil color. What, what I did at one stage um, when I was just getting a bit tired of drawing, I, I went and had some prints done of um, some of my, so that was, that was a pencil drawing that I did. Yeah. I took it to the printer and I had some, some copies made, just basically photocopies on cardboard. Mm -hmm. And then I put, I put watercolor over the, over the photocopy. Um, so the photocopy made it darker and it, it made it waterproof. And then I used that to then play with, with, with color. So because, because a lot of the tone work was there with the pencil shading, it was more layering washes of color over the top of it. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And especially, this is, I think, one of the ones I liked the best because it was the most challenging. It was most, I'm pointing to it, but no one can see that. It was most challenging with the light um, yeah. and trying to create the sense of light in it. So. It's, much about, it's much different about your work. The next question I must rapidly ask you, do you use smooth hot pressed paper? Uh, he or she's uh, asking about the uh, your pressure, uh, the, the pencil or in, uh, pen, the pen pressure on the paper and the paper quality. Uh, um, I use the paper. I use it's um, it's a brand Art Up. Um, it's an so Australian have, brand. So. Our, our, sorry, we have the less than two minutes only. Please answer. Yeah, <laughs> look, I no the, the paper. I the paper I draw on. It's 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 um, fairly thick sort of like a heavy cartridge paper but it's it's very smooth it's very smooth thank yeah. you thank you so for the last minute i'm so i'm so thankful about your time and thank you about you and this time this, this is a great opportunity to our audiences i uh, hope that uh, we have the good context to invite you to our countries to our workshops to uh, we have the uh, the nice times together and if you have any recommendation if you have any advice to our audiences or anything mm -hmm. uh, that you want to say uh, please tell us in up to 30 seconds thank you look can, can I can I just say um, I'm really grateful for this opportunity um, because in my Instagram account I can see the top cities the mm -hmm. followers and uh, at the moment, number two is Istanbul and number three is Tehran. So, I mean, as, a, as, a, as an artist in Australia, um, it just blows they my mind. You, There's all these people in these parts of the world I've never been to that seem so far away who are really interested in my work. And it's, it's really the hearts, exciting. The hearts, Can I just say thank you? Thank you very much. Our hearts is beating for you from... Uh, from that Sydney to our city <laughs> in, yes, in yes. Iran, in Iran, Tabriz, in Iran, or Istanbul, or yes. and thank you very much, dear Stefan, and I hope you will be fine and with health after this Corona era. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you, Hamid. Thank you, everyone.